still another 20 minutes to play, and Scott may talk confidently about the second half. When we walked out in the second half, we were down six points against Michigan. I felt confident. I'm sure everybody on our squad felt confident. If we could have just catch up and tie the score within a few minutes, that there was no way they were going to keep us winning the national championship. The thing that without any question I'll remember most about the 1975-76 national championship season at Indiana University was the second half of the Michigan game. I felt this was probably the 20-minute segment that we played the best basketball that we played at any time during the course of the season. We made just two errors during the second half, and this was a team that I felt had worked extremely hard to get where they were, a team that I thought in every respect was deserving of the title national champion, and I think they went about the second half proving that they were the best team in the country. All the experts agreed this was the finest 20 minutes of basketball they had ever seen. Indiana completely dominating the second half. One of the Hoosier stars was Kent Benson. Connecting here on the hook shot, making the score, Michigan 39, Indiana 37. In the second half, Benson missed only two of eight shots, in addition to pulling down six rebounds. Two points now separated the teams. The Wolverines were definitely rattled and off their game, having scored only four points in the first five minutes of the second half. One reason was the all-around play of number 21, Quinn Buckner, the Indiana co-captain, who displayed superb leadership. What a second half he had. He did it all. The six-foot-three senior from Phoenix, Illinois, hustled from one end of the court to the other. He rebounded. He stole the ball. And he scored. In the second half alone, he totaled 15 points. Here, the Indiana Spark Plug scores again. No wonder his teammates considered him the team leader on the court. Johnny Orr simply could not believe Buckner's performance. Now, with 11 minutes to go, Kent Benson taking a pass from Scott May. He scores on the layup, and Indiana is ahead 51 to 49, and the Hoosiers are rolling. Next, it was Scott May's turn. He hangs in the air, scores on a jump shot from inside the circle. This next Indiana basket was a big one. Rich Balavisha scores after being set up by Jim Wisman. Number 23, Wisman was the key to the Indiana offense. He followed the coach's instructions perfectly. As uh, Coach Knight put me into the game, he said, all I want you to do is get the ball where it should be in the, you know, in the hands of Scott, where he can get his jump shot, or inside the Benny, where he uh, could go on the uh, Michigan center. With only six minutes to play in the game, Indiana leading 63-59, to 59, Scott May showed why he was known as Mr. Clutch. The play that broke Michigan's back. Watch this unbelievable shot. And here is May coming right back to do it again, this time on the fast break to put Indiana ahead 78-66. to 66. The Hoosiers were just two minutes away from winning the national championship. Indiana spent the rest of the game at the free throw line as Michigan committed fouls in desperation in the final minutes. The Wolverines played gallantly, but it wasn't enough. And here is how Coach Bobby Knight felt at this point. During the final moments of the Michigan game, I think those of you that witnessed it saw an extremely jubilant group of people, not just players, but coaches alike. It was the end of a long, long wait and an awful lot of work, and I think everything just kind of spilled over at the end. We were often characterized as a team of mechanical people, but I don't think uh, anyone that was around our team, anyone that was close to the players or the people involved would have ever thought this. This was a team with great emotions and great feelings for one another, and I think all of this was displayed at the end of the game. The first Indiana starter to leave the game was Quinn Buckner, who rushed over and embraced a wildly exuberant Bobby Knight, and then broke into the victory dance. Meanwhile, back on the court, there were only 12 ticks left on the clock. Another foul was called on Michigan. At this point, it was Scott May's turn to dance. He and Kent Benson had victory written all over their faces. They were deliriously happy. Together, they had accounted for 51 points and 17 rebounds. Scott May describes his feelings. And that's what I wanted, to be a part of a national championship team. And, you know, I would have done anything in the world just to be a part of it. It was just like a dream come true. And now Kent Benson's thoughts. I personally have wanted to play in the national championship. Getting that opportunity was just fantastic. And I just thank God that I had the opportunity to, to play on such a fine team. 
Following Benson off the court was number 45, Jim Cruz. Bobby Knight greeted Cruz the same way he did with the others, a big hug and a big embrace. The game ended on the following play. The Hoosier subs were on the court. The final play, number 22, Wayne Radford drives. He misses, but the rebound is put in by elite number 32, Mark Hamar. It was all over. Doing the right thing at the right time with the right amount of intensity. That's the Indiana basketball philosophy. These bicentennial champions were perfection. Maybe the best champs ever for a coach who will be back in the title game on that very same floor five years later. 1976, a look back. We hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Bob Lee.